Hi, I'm uh, Renier Vanderly. I am the CEO and founder of uh, Finduino. We help farmers uh, optimize crop results with uh, minimum use of resources. And uh, well, I wanted to start off with uh, thanking the, the Things Conference organization for the opportunity to present here today. I want to show some exciting opportunities for Laura Wan in an agricultural setting. So with that, let's get started. As a grower, I encounter the same challenges as other uh, farmers in the world. Uh, we produce food for a growing world population. And uh, in order to do that, we need water, uh, which is a problem in California right now, uh, in case you haven't heard. Uh, we have issues with labor availability and the cost of labor. And then uh, you don't want to use too much fertilizer and too much uh, crop protection. So you just want to make sure that you can run your farm in a sustainable way. Uh, what we also have right now is a problem with logistics. Uh, if you need certain materials, they may not be available because they may be manufactured overseas and they're stuck on a container. So logistics is another problem. Uh, you need to plan way ahead in order to have the stuff that you need in order to grow successfully. So uh, a solution that we provide uh, at Finduino is uh, our intelligent agronomy solution, which helps you improve fruit quality so you can get better pricing for your fruit. It improves the yield so you get more fruit. Uh, we reduce the use of labor and water and over time, we can improve uh, soil health. So we basically support uh, 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 sustainable practices. So how does intelligent agronomy help with all this? First, we are a dri data driven platform. So we need to collect data and we uh, get data from weather stations, satellites, and of course, uh, using the LoRaWAN network also from our sensors in the field. Uh, we can uh, collect a lot of data. Uh, in this example, you see uh, sensors in the ground, the green sensors here. So we, we get soil moisture, temperature, air, and relative air humidity, um, and, and a lot more. Uh, basically, uh, the choice of, uh, of sensors is nearly unlimited. The issue is that uh, you collect it and, and using your, you know, uh, the Vinduino app, cloud app where we have our, our magic happening, we turn that data into intelligence. Once we got that intelligence done, we sent data to the providers of uh, fertilizer and pest control materials. And uh, with the information from the field, they can determine when and how much of these materials are needed at the location. Once that is in place, we can send commands to our control station and we can apply locally the amounts of pest control and fertilizer and water that are needed for best crop results. So when we're talking about irrigation and irrigation systems, uh, we use the irrigation infrastructure not just to distribute water to the crop, but we also use the irrigation system to transport fertilizer and pest control products to the, uh, to the crop, uh, which of course uh, saves a lot of labor and effort. Uh, when we're talking about irrigation or just the application of water, uh, the, the, the typical uh, use of water during a growing season for a crop uh, basically is not constant, but it changes over time. And the most water is being used during the peak season, which is typically July in California. Uh, here you see an example of uh, an irrigation season. In California, at least in Southern California, it rarely rains. So we get winter rains and then during the growing season, we don't get hardly any rain at all. So this is where you see this, grow, this green uh, square showing uh, or indicating the irrigation season starting in March and ending in September. Whereas if you really follow the water need of the plants, such as uh, our system does, uh, we basically adjust the amount of water, not because uh, we, we think the season started and we just 
have a fixed amount of water that is applied frequently but we adjust the amount of water during the season based on soil moisture uh, the, the size of the crop and the, the crop water need and also the weather so uh, you see here that uh, and it's a little bit simplified here but early in the season farmers tend to over irrigate because the plants are still small and they don't need a lot of water yet but they need water to grow of course to get to the size where you want it to be so uh, in order to be at the side of safety uh, people uh, over water, tend to overwater a little bit and then during the midst of the season uh, the midst of summer uh, you see basically that uh, a lot of farms water stress the crops so they don't give enough water uh, for the plants to fully develop uh, their fruit and as such you see that uh, underdeveloped fruit gives you lower uh, crop results uh, also what what happens often is that after harvest people stop irrigating until next year starts uh, that is not a good way to do it you want to keep your, uh, your 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 roots wet or at least keep the moisture in so the roots don't dry out because if you have permanent crops like wine grapes you want your crops to be ready to give you another bumper crop the next year so now i want to zoom in on soil moisture data because uh, the quality of the data that we collect here is very important for the quality of our irrigation decisions uh, there are different technologies to measure soil moisture uh, one on the left uh, is using tensiometers which is basically the force that uh, the soil is holding on to water so for uh, uh, sand for example you can imagine that the the force of holding water is not very big so it's easy for a plant to get water out of sandy soil but on the other hand the amount of water that is being stored in sandy soil is not very much uh, if you compare it with clay for example clay has smaller particles holds to water much with much more tightness so it basically can store more water but it takes more energy from the from the plant or, or a vacuum pressure from the plant to uh, to extract water from clay soil so um, that is what is being measured with uh, the, the the tensiometer and the electric equivalent of a tensiometer is the watermark sensor now what you're trying to do is you're trying to uh, maintain the level of water if you compare uh, your soil uh, water holding capacity as a gas tank in your car uh, you don't want to run it till empty uh, so that's where typically in this case you see like between 55 and 60 you see this orange part on the left that is where your, your your plant starts to struggle and uh, below 10 it's basically overwatered you're you're basically uh, spilling gasoline out of the car because you're over you know you're, you're tanking too you're, you're fueling too much and you're probably creating runoff if you get to that level but um so you want to keep that level somewhere in the middle so like you like 30 to between 30 and 40 in this case and it depends on on the type of plant of course uh, so uh, that is on the left side uh, tensiometer and watermark uh, which basically um, are independent of the type of soil so that is their big advantage on the right side you see capacitive sensors which basically measure the, the day electric value between the two electrodes which changes with the water content so that's another way of, of uh, measuring how much percentage of water is uh, available in the in the water holding tank if you call it, call it that way and in this case you see that you, you're basically good between seven percent and twenty percent in this case it's a sandy soil sandy loam which is uh, Temecula Arlington sand so uh, in if you're having uh, capacitive sensors you want to look at the percentage and be somewhere in the middle of where you want to be whereas on the soil water potential uh, you're independent of the soil uh, and you can basically determine to be between 30 and 40 if you want to be in the middle whereas with volumetric water content you really need to be able to interpret the data the volumetric data uh, compared to the type of soil so there's a big difference between how much water is available in in clayish soil versus sand, sand soil so that's an important difference and uh, apart from uh, the correct installation 
the correct interpretation of the soil moisture data is very important as well. So, so far we've been talking about water, irrigation, and irrigation management. Uh, if you're uh, in California and you're asking a farmer what his most important problem is, uh, you, you, you may expect uh, two answers. Uh, when you're asking that question during a drought year, uh, water will be the most important problem. When you're asking uh, during a non-drought year, uh, the answer is going to be labor, the availability of labor and the cost of labor. So how can we help here with LoRaWAN-based solutions? The picture already gives you a hint. Uh, so we see a tractor here with a tank on a cart, a pump, and then a uh, spray nozzles on the back. So this is typically a setup for spraying fertilizer or distributing fertilizer in a field. Uh, and the way it's being done, of course, you can imagine uh, the tractor basically loads up the tank, the cart, uh, it, the, the sprayer is being calibrated and then the tractor needs to move through the field with a constant speed in order to provide an even distribution of the, the desired materials. So this can be done uh, in an automated way using the irrigation system. If we inject the fertilizer in the irrigation system and then distribute it through the dripper uh, lines, um, which are already there. So it basically requires automation of the irrigation plus automation of a fertilizer injection pump uh, or a, just an in injection pump in case of uh, other materials that are supposed to be injected. So uh, that saves not just the labor and the time, but it also makes it more efficient. There is an ad another ad additional advantage of uh, using an automated way. We typically see that because of the amount of labor and uh, the limited availability of labor, that uh, applications of fertilizer and pesticides are done only a few times per year. It's just not possible to do it more often. So that means that large amounts of fertilizer and, and, and uh, pest control are being applied one, one, once uh, in a while. And that means that the plants cannot absorb that ball is basically being wasted and it ends up in, in, the, in the groundwater. So that's a problem. Uh, by inserting it in smaller amounts over the whole season in a controlled way, uh, you can basically uh, use less material, uh, m have a better efficiency of the use, and you will basically not um, pollute the environment with, with pesticides and uh, an over, uh, overly uh, amount of uh, fertilizer injected. So there's a lot of uh, uh, advantages of uh, applying fertilizer and pesticides through the irrigation system in an automated way. So now we are already at the last slide of this presentation. Um, I wanted to uh, finish by uh, sharing with you uh, a working farm installation that uh, uses solar power. So it's off the grid. Uh, it has two controllers, uh, LoRa ba LoRaWAN based controllers. One is in class A, one is in class C. The class A is uh, controlling up to four valves, which are shown here in the picture. And the class C controller controls the fertilizer pump and the master valve. It also connects to a flow meter which is intended to uh, keep track of the performance of the irrigation system, detect leaks, and also do the recording of how much water has been applied to which field and how much uh, fertilizer has been applied. So that's the main function of the flow meter. Uh, with that, uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this presentation. Uh, we've gone through a lot in just 15 minutes. Uh, we've gone through you know, what, is, what is the list of typical problems that, that farmers are facing. We talked about intelligent agronomy, what does it mean and uh, how do we at Vinduino implement it. We talked about soil moisture, uh, we talked about uh, fertilizer and pest, co pest control injection and uh, we finished with a, a quick example of a working installation. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I, I wish you a great rest of your uh, conference. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me later. Thank you and goodbye for now. Thank you.